Nick Hanauer, you, you've heard your opponents say to some degree that the, the pie is bigger because of the people who are successful at the top. And in your opening remarks, you, you made the argument that that just doesn't make sense. But can you elaborate a little bit now that they've, they've made more of a point that their, their hard work, ingenuity, investment, risk taking actually uh, causes, you know, actually grows the pie overall? Uh, we're, we're in violent agreement about that, mm -hmm. that, 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 that our, our economy um, uh, benefits massively from very clever and very hardworking people uh, taking risks and innovating. That's not the question. The question is, should only a few percent of us be able to do that? And the answer to that is categorically no. I mean, look, here's the way to connect these two things. Why are the rich getting richer and the poor getting poorer? Well, here's the reason, because over the last 40 years, the percent of profits that American corporations generate as a percentage of GDP has gone from 6 to 12%. At the same time, the percent of, of uh, uh, labor in uh, the percent of GDP devoted to labor has gone from 52 to 42. So that difference is about a trillion dollars annually. So that here's the thing you have to understand: that trillion dollars isn't profit because it needs to be, or should be, or has to be. It's profit because powerful people like me and Ed prefer it to be. That trillion dollars could very easily be spent on wages. Or, or on discounts for consumers. This isn't a consequence of some magical law of economics. This is a consequence of differentials in power. And the thing is, the thing is, is that if that trillion dollars was instead of stuck in my bank account, Ned's bank account, but instead was, was coursing through the economy as wages and opportunity, we'd have more innovators. We'd have more risk takers. That's the beautiful thing about capitalism. If you All set right. it up right, it works super well. Ed Conard. I do think there's a popular argument, which is investment waits for demand. Uh, and if we don't get the de customer demand, we won't get the investment. But it isn't true. Investment doesn't wait for demand. Apple will create an iPhone, and Samsung will come up with a comp competition, and Microsoft will scramble to, to fix their problem. There's a lot of churn in the economy, <laughs> and there's a lot of investment in the economy, and the people who are generating that investment, the money that Nick's saving, which is funding those investments, causes a lot of other consumption in our economy and puts a lot of other people to work. And so what these guys have done, because their argument isn't stronger, they retreat to a mathematical truth, which is this. If the pie stayed the same and we split it up different, people would have $18,000 more money. Germany, France, Japan, they've all tried it. They all distribute income more equally, and they are not able to achieve the median incomes that we achieve in the United States. And why is that? Because there's another economic truth that they don't want to admit to, which is you have to get a customer to pay somebody $18,000 more a year to buy the product to pay them that. And if you can't do that, all the mathematical splitting of the world won't, won't, won't solve your problem. All right, I want to